Communication skills are strategic when it comes to health issues. Everyone needs to communicate. An oncologist, a surgeon, a pathologist, just to name a few examples. They need to deal with their colleagues and other health caregivers. They need to communicate with patients and their families. Professor Claire Nicol is a consultant physician and associate lecturer at Edinburgh's Hospital and Cambridge University. She is now visiting professor at the University of Pavia and is running a course at the Collegio Nuovo, thanks to Professor Giovanni Ricevuti and two students of our college. Professor Nicol, doctors can do more than ever, but trust in professionals is decreasing. How can we handle this? Well, it's a paradox, isn't it? Because, of course, 200 years ago, doctors really couldn't cure very much, and now we can do so much for people. But I think it's really a question of good communication. I think that these days people expect to be treated as equals and to take part uh, in the consultation and to be involved in deciding their treatment. So medicine is a teamwork within and between teams. What are the most common communication problems in your experience? Well, I think the problem is that everyone is always in too much of a hurry, <laughs> rushing about and only seeing things from their own point of view. Sometimes it's necessary to try and slow down a bit and make sure you look at the overall picture. I also think we tend to send far too many emails and sometimes it's much better to pop round and actually meet a colleague and talk to them face to face or phone them perhaps a general practitioner in the community. Patients and their families certainly appreciate that little bit of extra time. What about explaining honestly the situation of the patient to your colleague? It's particularly important when you're trying to get things done in a very busy hospital. I think a lot of junior doctors who know they've got to arrange tests for a patient almost feel pressurised to try and claim that everything is urgent. And then colleagues get frustrated and cross. In my experience, it's much better to be very honest about why you want a test done for a patient. And then I think your colleagues are much more likely to feel that it's you know, worthwhile helping as quickly as possible. Now, what about the students? What do you focus on when you are teaching communication skills to your students? And let's say, what kind of differences have you experienced when dealing with students in the United Kingdom and students in Italy? So teaching communication skills is all about teaching the process, whereas traditionally medicine has focused on the content. And I think now communication skills have been embedded in the curriculum in the UK for probably at least 20 years, whereas in Italy I think the teaching is still a little more traditional and the focus is on obtaining information. <laughs> so it was quite a surprise to some of the students that one could focus on the way one should communicate. But then we don't get it right the whole time in the UK either. There's recently been quite a big campaign called My Name Is, because a young doctor who unfortunately was found to have cancer was in hospital herself and she realised that lots of the doctors and the nurses and the domestic staff didn't introduce themselves. And so she had no idea who they were. So it's really important to get the simple things right and to start off by saying who you are and what your role is for that particular patient. Mm -hmm. The students are really keen and enthusiastic to learn mm -hmm. and I think clearly have a very international focus now. So they very much want to know uh, what people are doing in other countries because we've all got things to learn. Uh, from each other really. I mean the traditional way of learning medicine in England was very much from role models 
And of course, everybody thinks all doctors should be good role models. Well, that's ideal. But sadly, we're not always good role models. And even if normally you're a good role model, you have a bad day. But if the students know what to look for and understand communication, they can learn things even from watching a bad role model because they'll think, gosh, I wouldn't do it like that. And they can observe the consequences. So we don't always have to be perfect to help our students learn. Thank you very much, Professor Nicol.